and welcome to another episode of the Yelp Yelp Show, where today we are trying to save the cornfield. <laughs> Let me get my shirt untucked so I might move around a little bit. I want to show y'all real quick. Look right here. This is where the hogs have just gone through the Middle East rows and just taken out. Look at that. They're just taking out the whole center row. When they planted the corn, the hogs just literally, literally go right down the row. Look at this. Look how even. They just... Look there. Golly. Well, we're here to change that today. They come in here. They went down the rows. I mean, literally, they just get, each hog gets in a row, and they just, and they just take up the kernels of corn. So, all you vegans out there, all you vegetarians, the hogs is taking the food away from everybody. So, that's why we knock them in the head. And then we take that meat and we feed families. Knocking heads and feeding families. I know there's always a lot of hate and I try not to concentrate on that. I just like to try to educate uneducated people in a sarcastic way. <laughs> we eat meat. I don't care about your, <laughs> your iron can be low, but mine is going to be just right. Come on. But anyway, way, we started feeding right here since they were already just eating up the cornfield. I told him, I said, just pile it up. The farmer told us, just pile it up. I'll put a camera over it. We put the trap. I brought the trap. I brought the trap in here yesterday. They come in again last night. We're gonna set it up, but I gotta go out of town, so we're gonna feed them, set it up, and, and uh, see how this works in the next couple of days, so we can save it. They wanted to replant it, but we got a lot of rain coming, so uh, we will get the trap up, set up today, and uh, hopefully we can get these hogs out of here as fast as we can. So, any which ways, I'm gonna set this trap up and uh, get with it. It's a work day. Well, there's the setup. And it's starting to rain now, so anyway, we're trying to save this crop field, hopefully next day or two. But you know, just like anything, when I set a trap, the rain's gonna come. But I gotta get out of here, because this mud's gonna be slick. This field's gonna be slick. So, uh, anyway, woo! We'll see y'all very, very soon. <sighs> well, good morning. How y'all doing today? We are up early. I say it's early. I've been up early. It's only about 7.20 right now, but we're headed south to South Georgia. About a seven-hour road trip. Whew. We didn't know which way he's going to put on an event. They got me as the guest speaker down there, and I guess we'll have a good time, you know? <laughs> like I said, seven hours on the road, headed south, and then uh, do the event, and possibly seven hours right back up. I got pigs to catch. I know y'all been waiting on them pigs. I know y'all be like, you're doing everything but catching pigs. I promise you, we finna get to them. Just got a little business to tend to first. <laughs> so, anyways, my wife's going to the Morgan Wallen concert tonight with her girlfriends, and they got uh, one of their dads is gonna drive them up there and then drive them home. So hopefully they'll have a safe trip and everybody else is at the concert tonight. So, any which ways, we headed to South Georgia, put on an event. Let's roll. Well, first stop. I think we are in Ozark, Alabama. We're about two hours away from the event in Cairo, I believe. So anyway, uh, I'm a little earlier, which we will hit a time zone and jump me ahead, but we're gonna stop at Applebee's and grab something to eat real quick before get that energy up before we get to get the show out and see what happens on the show tonight. Come on. Well, looks like I made it to the right place, but I'm a little bit early right now. So, a little bit earlier, but it looks like we made it, so we're going to try to find our way around. There's a couple vehicles here. I usually, on these far trips, I try to get as early as I can and uh, kind of study up, get my mind right for the, the for the event. And I like also to uh, get a little nap in because I probably will be rolling back home tonight in that seven hours. So, anyway, let's go see if we can find somebody around here that knows if I'm supposed to be here or not. <laughs> Stubs in here. Everybody. Right. I mean, if you bought a ticket, I want to make sure that you get uh, you get that. Well, back on the road, and it says get home about 2:15 in the morning. We got six and a half hours of road time, so we'll be keeping the music rolling. We'll stop and get us some gas and a little bit of Red Bull. See my baby tonight, hopefully, if I can hold up. Oh, 
Well, good morning. Oh, we just rolled in about two o'clock this morning. It's about 10 in the morning right now. So I uh, just rebaited that, of course. And I had pigs in here last night, but I didn't drop because it was just late, man. I didn't have all the pigs. I didn't have all the pigs in there. Don't get me wrong. I didn't have all the pigs in there. But <laughs> you see how all that's rooted up now? What happened was, you know that rain I was getting caught in? Well, you can see it's a little ditch right there, right? right up, going right up under my truck. It rained so hard that it washed corn out down through here. And hogs, some of the big hogs stayed out here and they just rooted up everything. So, anywho, it's just damage, damage, damage and uh, whatnot. But we're trying, we're trying. It's been a couple of days and uh, I posted a thing on Facebook about the, how the pigs went down through there and somebody told me I was a liar. Said that pigs don't do that. They don't stay in a row. They root. It's like, man. I don't know why people try to tell the pig trapper. <laughs> uh, stuff they don't know nothing about. The farmer has me here because the pigs were coming through there right down the road. <laughs> it's like, man. Uh, but anyway, we rebaited up. And uh, I'm going to the next spot. Uh, well, I got a bunch of pigs. They've been coming in. They just got a bully hog in there. So, anywho, uh, let's take the old Barnes Crossing GMC and get out of this field and hopefully soon we drop in the trap Top the hill. See what we 
jet. See how we gotta get them calmed down? They get used to us being. You just kind of let them get to smelling you. Maybe they'll just calm down a little bit. Keep my arm in it. <laughs> get ready to knock these down and uh, this will be for the yardyard.com for people that want to come see the head knocking but i'm gonna cut it short on this part and try to get them knocked down fast as we can if y'all know exactly how tired I am, but I'm tired today, bro. Been, uh, y'all seen me on the road. Y'all seen me come sit traps. Y'all seen me on the road. And, uh, seen me, uh, boy play baseball. We got in late last night. Uh, what else? And then we get up early morning, come get these pigs. I'm tired, boss. I is tired. So anyway, look like the farmers replanted yesterday. Uh, trying to get some stuff in the ground. However, look right here. Like, hogs hit it. I don't know if these hogs hit it before I trapped them. Well, I know they had to hit it before I trapped them <laughs> because they're in the trap. But anyway, I just find a row. And I just go to digging right down through there. Oh, uh, rooting. So, I had, uh, this is 10 hogs. I had 12 here. Two of them would not go in. I watched them for four days and would not go in there. So, Oh, we gotta come up with a different game plan to get those two because it's two big hogs. And oh, anyway, well, I gotta get the cage up in the air because we're gonna leave the trap here. Get the cage up in the air and whatnot. And y'all know the routine: get them drug out. I got people coming here to get the pig, so I don't have to worry with them. get two of them two of those hogs stayed i mean for four nights they stayed back there and i couldn't get them to i mean they never would come 
Well, you see kind of where they rooted up back there. Yes. Y'all replanted yesterday, didn't you? No, I'm gonna re we put out ammonia first. I'm gonna replant it today. Okay, I got you. I got you. Well, oh, um, that's two, but it ain't twelve. Whew, man. I warmed up dragging them up here. Well, they come and leave and get them. They come and get them. They come and get them now. Okay. Good. Farmer checking things out. So he said they put the, what was it, fertilizer or something out yesterday in there. And they're only going to replant the section you can see that where they tore up. You can see it's kind of green over there. And they're just going to replant this real quick. But, man, I really hate, when it comes to stuff like this, I really hate not being able to get the uh, the whole sounder. We needed those other two, but it just seems like they're a little little weary. And he told me, he said, excuse me, he said that they've never, ever been able to trap hogs on this, this area right here. Never. Never had a hog go in a trap. Never, never. So we did catch 10. So 10 out of the 12, I mean, that's that's good. But still, for me, I need those other two. So we're going to figure out a way somehow. If we had to shoot them off that hill over there, what we're going to do. But he's checking out down there. And we're still just waiting around on the guys that's coming to get some pigs and whatnot. So... There you go. Cleaned up. Everybody rolling out. Let's go check on some other things. And I got a little surprise. Maybe. No, maybe not. <laughs> we shall see. Well, I told you I was going to try to have a little small surprise for you. And here we go with it. <laughs> so, those are the fuzzy wuzzies. The uh, hog balls, if you will, right there. And we're going to cook up a little something with a little bit of what I call the trailer hood magic. What I grew up on was Raymond noodles. And we just eat these things in the summertime when I was a kid like crazy. And then we would just add stuff from whatever's in the refrigerator. Uh, or like I said, we'd cut up vainas and put it in there. Pickles, you know, carrots and whatnot. I'm not gonna get into all that, but what I am gonna do is we're gonna fry up some of those hog balls and cook us some Raymond noodles. Have a little trailer hood lunch. Uh, you know, y'all been asking for it. Do I eat the fuzzy wuzzies? We're gonna try them right now. I've already cleaned off uh, most of this, or I say most of it, I have cleaned up all of it. This has got a very uh, texturous, I don't know how, what, it's just, it's almost like, ew. But anyway, I've taken off the membrane and all that and the outer sack of it, so this is just the, 
the uh, whatever you want to call it there. I'm going to just cut these up in half right there and then we'll take those in half and then cube them up a little bit. When I was cutting this, it almost split them in half anyway. So you can imagine how tough they were for me, but this is a real texturous like uh, meat. Almost, I don't know, I don't know what the word is because I'm not a cook, but anyway, we're gonna take some of these and uh, probably won't even cut that one up, but it's here for looks anyway, so. Well, we're gone. We don't need this much in our, in our <laughs> we don't need this much in our ramen noodles. And it is a little, little vein right there is what I cut there, cut in half, and then kind of, you can see right there. I'm not very, like I said, I'm not very good at this, but we can cut some of that meat off. Probably take this knife a little bit better, easier than what I'm doing. Cut that vein out, but we're not gonna eat it. This one did pretty good on that one. That one didn't have a vein on that side. So, and this one didn't have the vein. So that one had the vein. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scoot the veins over here. And uh, yeah, scoot the veins over there because I didn't get them out good. And then we'll just cut these chunks up. That's what we're gonna do. So my buddy would, uh, outside the levees, he cooked some cooked something with ramen noodles the other night, and it just brought this idea that I was like, "That's what we do, man. Ramen noodles goes into everything." So I have uh, flour, pepper, salt, and then I got mustard. I like mustard. A lot of people use eggs. I'm gonna add a little hot sauce to this because I love hot sauce, uh, just to give it a little kick, maybe. And then we'll. While our grease is getting hot over here. Looks like it is getting pretty hot. And uh, stir that up. Should put my gloves on. Should put my gloves on. You can put that right back. You can just put that in there like that right there. I love, I'm just telling you, I love mustard. So a lot of y'all probably are like, oh my God, I don't know about that. And I'm like, dude, it's legit. So we're just gonna get us a few pieces here. And uh, like I said, my grease is, Pretty hot, getting pretty hot over there. All right, I'll give a few more. What a mess, what a mess. I know, y'all probably like, oh, fan going over here. Like I said, that grease got hot. Probably should've took these outside. My wife don't like me cooking. I'm on a time frame here. She cannot stand me cooking. And that's a fact. She says I make a mess for some reason. I don't know. And I'm like, I don't make a mess all the time, baby. A little burnt. They burn a little bit. Yeah, that got hot quick, boy. Which is fine, because we're going to want these to cool down. Oh. Uh, Best we can. Well, I'm getting the water. Gotta get some water stirred up over here. I'm gonna take them along. Now, I will say, I am a two pack. Now, this is the beef flavor right here. They didn't have pork, of all things. <laughs> Put my bar of water boiling over there. And. Can't really see me from this side, can you? Well, but I like to break them in half. And get my little pack. I know, y'all probably thinking, oh my goodness. But that's all right. We're gonna see what it tastes like. My wife is gonna flip out when she, when she hears I hook, cook all balls in the house. She's gonna flip. Oh, 
Can you flip that for me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, ain't gonna be long. So we're gonna start taking some off here and uh, let the grease get out of them. I know y'all thinking of all the things to eat off a hog, but hey, we do it for your entertainment purposes. So, some fried. Something, Dad. Come on, water. Got to cook it up. So, you may not know this, but so I got like 360 on my wife and my child, <laughs> and I'm telling you, she don't want me cooking this stuff in the house. <laughs> and I seen it. She's over in Columbus. She's about 45 minutes away, and uh, she's coming home. Well, I say she'll come home. She she's coming this way. She may she still got some patience in our little town that she had to see, but. If she happens to swing by the house to pee. <laughs> uh, so I got the doors open. Look, I got the doors open. And uh, <laughs> I got the doors open and everything. Trying to circulate, you know, when that grease was hot when I first started. Trying to get it out of him. And uh, so I, when she come home, I'll be done with all this. She'll be like, you cook something? No, she gonna say, you burn something? <laughs> uh, come on. Come on. Oh yeah, we're good on the noodles now. We're rolling. Now it usually doesn't take about three to four minutes to get these noodles going, but I'm gonna tell you something about noodles. Like I said, I grew up on these things, and when 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 I was a kid during the summer, we had to eat them, and my stepdaddy would would text and whether we'd eat corn dogs or ramen noodles for lunch, and he'd come home for lunch real quick. And uh, what I tell you about these noodles is the reason I cooked them last is because you don't let noodles sit. You don't let these ramen noodles sit. They just turn. They just turn nasty, slimy, or whatever. But uh, so I like them fresh and right out, and then just gonna eat them. I don't be waiting around on these things. It ain't, it ain't nothing but. I mean, these ramen noodles ain't nothing but plastic, really. <laughs> so, uh, ain't got no good stuff for you. But I'm just telling you, if you decide to cook something, you want to put stuff in it, cook your noodles last, let your meat cool down. That's what I do because I grew up straight out of trailer hood, and uh, I know. Man, now I want corn dogs. Mm, pull them off the heat. Now I like to put mine in the bowl. A lot of people like to put their seasoning in the water. Maybe it soaks in, maybe it don't. You can put them buon cubes in there, bourbon cubes, whatever they call them. You can do all that. I just I kind of like to take my seasoning. Do it like that right there. Man, y'all don't understand. This was the this was the stuff. Bat and hamburger helper. And a little bang the cobbler. Ooh, what you talking about? All right. Get with the good stuff here in just a minute. <clears throat> you can just take these and cut them up a little bit if you want to. And just stick them in there like that right there. You can make them big as little as you want to. And this will do anything. You can use deer steak like this, rabbit. Like I said, the noodles is just, all it is, is a uh, filler. And everything else is the good stuff, right? Here right? tells the tale, my friend. Take a little bit of that ramen noodle. Man, that stuff's good, man. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna go with that chunk of hog ball right there.
Mmm. Not too good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It'll work. You gonna take a bite by itself? It has a just bite right through it kind of texture. Thank you for tuning in. But I gotta get this kitchen cleaned up the best I can and get out on the lawnmower. So when my wife comes home, I don't know what that hot grease smell is in the house. <laughs> oh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe, like, comment, tell me what a crazy whatever I am. <laughs> but y'all have a good one. God bless. And as always, Jesus loves you. Ow!